Antarctica was once a green and flourishing continent, but around 23 million years ago, it started to become an icy forest. For the last 15 million years, it has been covered in a thick sheet of ice, the unique geological formation of which is particularly interesting to researchers and explorers alike. Digging in Antarctica is like cutting into a time capsule of the planet. Strange things have been found there. Some date back millions of years, while others were only recently entombed. Let's find out more as I take a look at 10 of the most mysterious things found frozen in ice in Antarctica. Number 10. Ancient Worm Spermatozoa In 2015, researchers analyzing freezing soil samples that had been collected in Antarctica found something completely unexpected. Looking at the collected material under a scanning electron microscope, they described what they identified as a network of interwoven cables within the wall of a cocoon. It wasn't long until they discovered that these were actually the fossilized remains of ancient spermatozoa from clitolite annelids, or what we know as earthworms, leeches, and their relatives. Tests showed that the sample was more than 50 million years old. But what was more surprising was the sperm's similarity to that of present-day species of leech-like worms called Branchiobdelida. These worms are supposed to live exclusively in the northern hemisphere, but this find considerably expands their geography and poses a new conundrum to scientists. How did they evolve? Further investigation, including more high-resolution imaging and the collection of new samples is underway. But regardless of the outcome, it's proof that the Antarctic environment holds clues that could potentially change our understanding of how life developed on the planet. Number 9. Fossilized Forest in late 2016, researchers discovered fossil fragments in Antarctica from trees dating back to around the time of the world's greatest mass extinction event around 260 million years ago. They were found in the sedimentary rock layers beneath the snow of the McIntyre Promontory on the Ramsey Glacier. The fossils contained clues about the tree's biology and even held preserved microorganisms and fungi that lived in the wood. It became clear that the plants that once lived there were able to adapt to the environment much quicker than those around the rest of the world today. While today's trees might take a number of months to transition between the seasons, the trees of Antarctica were able to do this in a matter of weeks. Somehow they were able to survive not only four to five months of complete darkness, but also four to five months of continuous light. Scientists don't yet fully understand how they were able to cope, but they did. Let's hope scientists solve this mystery soon as their findings could well be applied to forest conservation efforts. Number 8. 200-Year-Old Human Skull In 1985, an object was discovered at a place called Yamana Beach on Antarctica's South Shetland Islands. It was a human skull, and it had been left behind by one of Antarctica's earliest visitors, an indigenous woman from southern Chile in her early 20s who was thought to have died between 1819 and 1825. These are the oldest known human remains ever to be discovered in Antarctica. The location of the remains was unexpected. The skull was found, along with parts of her femur, near a sealer's camp set up in the early 19th century. Female sealers were unheard of at that time, and there are no documents to explain why a young woman came to be in Antarctica at this time. The bones also have a part to play in the geopolitics of the area. When the Antarctic Treaty System comes up for review in 2048, so do the environmental safeguards that protect it. Archaeological finds like this can help present a better case for conservation, while allowing for a country like Chile to have more of a bargaining position in the eventual talks. The 200-year-old skull is now thought to align with the first known landings in Antarctica, but the mystery of the Chilean woman still remains. Number 7. Mawson's Air Tractor in 1912, only nine years after the first flight by the Wright brothers, British-born Australian explorer Douglas Mawson began an attempt to explore the South Pole from the air. His first and only attempt was hampered by a hungover pilot who managed to crash the plane during a test flight in Australia. Mawson sent the test pilot home to Britain in disgrace, but decided to take the flightless but functional plane to Antarctica, where it would be used as an air tractor to pull their sleds across the icy wastes. Unfortunately, the plane's engine was unable to work in sub-zero temperatures and Mawson was forced to abandon it at Cape Denison. The engine was removed and sent back to the Vickers Aviation Company and the fuselage was left behind. What remained of the plane was thought to be lost for good until it was spotted again in 1975. Then, in 2009, thanks to the fortunate combination of a blue moon and an exceptionally low tide, 
a carpenter who was part of a team of explorers who'd spent three years searching for the plane, spotted fragments of the fuselage among some rocks near Cape Denison. Were it not for this lucky combination of factors, the remains of the plane might never have been found, and an important part of the Antarctic exploration's early history could have been lost forever. Number 6. Blood Falls One of the strangest sites in Antarctica was first discovered in 1911. The place is known as Blood Falls, and you can see why. A deep crimson liquid emerges from the mouth of the Taylor Glacier on the eastern side of the continent, and it has stained the ice around it. The cause of this phenomenon has baffled scientists ever since the first images were taken and for a long time it was thought to be the result of algae discoloring the water. Recently, researchers have announced that they finally know the true explanation. By using a method called radio echo sounding, they were able to look at the features that lay beneath the glacier and trace the supersaturated Brine River back to its source. It takes water about one and a half million years to work its way through the glacier and emerge at the Blood Falls, and that water comes from a brine lake that is full of iron from the underlying rock. The water under high pressure is pushed out from beneath and it comes into contact with oxygen near the surface, at which point the iron oxidizes and turns this shade of rusty red. Mystery solved. Number 5. Pegasus Wreck On October 8, 1970, a C-121 Lockheed Constellation plane was flying over Antarctica. The pilots were battling a vicious storm, but were forced to press on because they didn't have enough fuel to boomerang back to New Zealand. The storm worsened, thrashing at the plane and ripping large pieces off its exterior. Soon enough, the Pegasus started dropping out of the sky and it eventually crashed down onto the frozen waste below. There were 80 people on board the plane, but the real mystery of this accident is that they all survived and managed to carry out their research after being rescued. If you ever take a trip to McMurdo Station, you can still find the Pegasus resting next to a runway that carries its name, covered in layers of ice and snow. The images are an arresting reminder of the dangers of Antarctic exploration and research, and this wouldn't have been possible without the intrepid men and women who make it their mission to find out more about these barely habitable regions. Number 4. Ancient Creatures During an exploration in 2018 of a subglacial lake about 370 miles from the South Pole in West Antarctica, one team made an astonishing discovery. Lake Mercer has laid untouched for thousands of years and had only previously been seen in images created from laser scans of the area. Lying beneath 3,501 feet of ice, it covers an area of about 62 square miles and it took two days of drilling with a high pressure hot water drill to get to it. When samples were brought out of the lake, they were tested and were found to contain some surprising things. First, the water contained enough oxygen to support aquatic animals, and a large number of bacteria were detected. More significantly, though, were the remains of tiny ancient creatures that were found, including a tardigrade, crustaceans, diatom shells, and what's believed to be a type of fungi. Not all of these were aquatic creatures. It's thought that they thrived in parts of the nearby mountain range during warmer spells over the past 120,000 years, and were washed down into the lake once they died. Discoveries like these provide us with new insights into what life looked like at that time, and more importantly, how these creatures survived in such extreme conditions. Number 3. Meteorites Allen Hills 84001 Antarctica covers a large area, and thanks to the color of its terrain, it's easy to spot things that don't fit in. That's what makes it such a great place to find rocks that have fallen from space. There's actually a NASA-funded team of scientists called the Antarctic Search for Meteorites, or ANSMET, that visits each year, and they've made some great finds. One, known as Allen Hills 84001, was found in 1984 in the Allen Hills. The 4.3-pound rock is thought to have come from Mars, and in 1996, a group of scientists claimed to have found evidence in the meteorite to suggest that it contains fossils of Martian bacteria. This evidence was eventually refuted, though the discussion is considered a turning point in the history of the developing science of astrobiology. Since the first ANSMED expedition 40 years ago, more than 200 different people have taken part, and at least 20,000 specimens have been brought back for study. In fact, two-thirds of the meteorites and collections around the world have come from Antarctica. It's not just US-led missions that search there either. Japan, China, South Korea, Italy, Belgium, and Britain have all sent teams. And who knows, it could be that one day the best evidence for life in outer space will be found lying on the ground in one of the most hostile places on the planet. Number 2. Neutrinos 
The standard model of particle physics describes various types of subatomic particles that exist in the universe. For the most part, they're only detectable if an extremely large machine is built for that purpose, like the Large Hadron Collider. The one exception to this is neutrinos. Their name means little neutral ones, and it's the fact that they have no electrical charge that makes them particularly difficult to detect. They're created in nuclear processes, but rarely interact with anything else, despite there being so many of them. There are thought to be as many as a billion times as many neutrinos in the universe as there are neutrons, and a hundred billion of them are passing through your fingertips right now. Antarctica is one place where a laboratory has been set up to study neutrinos. That's because there's an increased chance of observing one interacting with densely packed ice. Known as the Ice Cube Experiment, one incredible discovery was made in 2017 when a neutrino was spotted and researchers were able to trace it back to its origin a spinning, supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy called a blazar that's about 3.9 billion light years away. Number one, the Wilkes Land Gravity Anomaly. Stretching 151 miles wide and about half a mile deep is a mysterious object that lies beneath the Wilkes Land region in Antarctica. It was first theorized to be there in 1962 because of unusual seismic and gravity readings in the area. In 2006, a wider 300-mile impact crater was shown to be surrounding it. While some suggest it's the site of a secret military base or the landing site for UFOs, the true cause might be just as amazing. Some researchers believe that it's an impact crater of an asteroid, but one that was more than twice the size of the one that struck Chicxulub and wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Evidence suggests it hit less than 500 million years ago, and it's now thought to be a possible cause of the Permian-Triassic extinction event, which occurred 250 million years ago and was the largest extinction event on Earth since multicellular life developed. Nothing can be known for sure, though, until samples can be dug up from within the supposed impact site. What these samples will reveal, it's hard to tell, but the significance of the mysterious readings given out by the anomaly cannot be understated. With such a large area covered with ice, there's certainly still more to be found across Antarctica. What do you think we'll find inside the ice next? And where would be the best place to look? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.